stripes we are healed by his stripes we are healed now notice that when he says surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows let me read from the literal translation young's literal translation he translated the bible literally from the hebrew notice how he translates isaiah 53 verse 4. he says and surely our sicknesses he has borne and our pains he had carried them and we have esteemed him plagued smitten of god and afflicted where he says griefs uh, he has borne our surely our sicknesses he has borne and our pains he has carried he, he, he has he has carried them and you smitten of god and afflicted when he talks about smitten of god and being afflicted he's not talking about what the roman soldiers did to him if you were standing there there was something else going on behind the scenes somebody had to pay the price for adam's transgression and jesus was the one that on the cross he paid that price so god was smiting him on our behalf in the old testament because of jesus had not yet come every year the high priest had pre they took an animal and put the sins of the people on the animal and send the animal far away from the city so jesus when he hung on the cross not only paid the price for sin notice that he addresses the sickness issue before he even gets to the sickness to, to, to the sin so he says this this is very important surely he has born so so, so young young says he says surely our sickness he has born and our pains he had carried them your sickness my sickness all the sickness of the whole world god afflicted the lord jesus christ on the cross and he placed it on him our pains and he carried it them away when you get the revelation of this then he sees the punishment necessary to obtain he says that smitten by but he was wounded for our transgression he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed it's not talking about the stripes that was laid on the back of jesus by those roman soldiers if that could bring healing then i can choose to do the same thing i will get get somebody please put some stripes on my back because somebody else needs healing <laughs> no no it was all happening behind the scenes so jesus has carried away your sickness he's carried away your pain the whole the punishment necessary to uh, for you to obtain wholeness spirit soul and body god laid it on jesus christ what love so what jesus has born for you and i there is no need to bear it again but the thing to realize is, you see, you heard the sin part preach a lot, the forgiveness of sins, the remission of sins, so it's easy for you to believe. But if you can get to the place where you believe also that Jesus has paid the price for your sickness, it will be as easy for you to receive healing and for as easy for you to walk in hell. I pray in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, as you hear the word of the Lord, even the same thing that happened to the man at Lystra, may you, as you, may you receive faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the living God. He has paid the price for your sin. Receive your wholeness this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus. I said receive your wholeness this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus. Receive your wholeness this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet be made whole in jesus mighty name Amen. my lord and my god so notice 
in Matthew chapter 8, verse Matthew chapter 8, thank you, Lord Jesus. An inspired translation of the by the Holy Spirit of Matthew 8 17 of Isaiah 53, verse, verse 4. He says that it might be fulfilled. This was when Jesus was healing, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. He took it. He bore our pains. He carried them far away from us. That is what I saw very early in my Christian walk. And I said, no sentence has to be said twice. If Jesus paid the price for my, for, for, for my, for my sin at the same time as my sickness, then there is no use, both of us bearing it. There is no news for me to go through life and be buffeted by sickness. No, 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 no. I don't remember the last time I took medication for anything. The last 20 years or so. I've been depending on the word of God. That is, that, it doesn't happen because I'm saying it. You have to think and meditate on it. Notice this. Let's go, go, go look at some more scriptures to build our faith along those lines. Psalm 103. Psalm 103. Actually, before that. So notice Peter, Peter again. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. Thank you, Lord. He says this, 1 Peter 2, 24. Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we having died to sin my life for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed now he puts it in the past tense but notice again that the sin situation is put together with the healing on the body on the tree we haven't died to sin my life for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed from God's standpoint, the sin situation has been solved. The healing situation has been solved. We separate it. God doesn't separate it. It's all the same in his mind. Think about it. If you live long enough, and when, if we live long enough, and Jesus doesn't come and we leave, anybody else that is coming along, the prize for their sin that the price for, for them to be recreated has already been paid. Any sickness in the world, the price for that has already been paid. Very important. Psalm 103, verse 3. Psalm 103, thank you Lord Jesus. Psalm 103, notice this. Verse 1 says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Don't forget it. What are the benefits? Three. Who forgives all your iniquities? Who heals all your diseases in the same verse? Who redeems your life from destruction? Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies? Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles? He heals all your iniquities. He heals all your diseases. The same power that saves, that forgives you your sins, is the same power that heals the diseases. Jesus. So why is everybody in the world not a child of God? Why is everybody in the world not healed? That is why I'm standing here today. I am preaching the good news. <laughs> it's either they haven't heard it or they heard it and they turned it down. So Lystra, Paul, he gets to Lystra and there they preach the gospel. He must have also been preaching that Jesus took your infirmities. Jesus bore your sicknesses. Jesus paid the price for your sin. 
there is no need for you to remain in captivity. Maybe if you are listening or watching on TV, listening on radio, wherever you may be, I have come to announce to you by the word of the living God. Christ has redeemed you for the curse. Maybe you are bound by sin. He has came to redeem you and to set you free. Receive your freedom and your liberty from both sin and from sickness and pains in Jesus' name. If you believe that, say amen. amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory be to the name of the Lord. So we realize that the price, get this, don't let this ever leave you throughout your whole life. The power that forgives is the same power that heals. It's just that you've had one, one, you've had one a lot of times, so it's easy for you to, when you pray, say, Lord, forgive me my sins, you believe that he's forgiven you. Do the same, switch it a little bit. It will just as easy, be as easy for you to be healed or for you to walk in health and in wholeness. So the question becomes, if the thing is available for me, how do I receive it? How do I walk in the fullness of it every single day of my life? One, you see, you have to, you, notice, notice, let's go back to that story again. Acts chapter 14. Thank you, Lord. Notice what happened here. He says, now, there they were preaching the gospel. Verse 9 says, this man had Paul speaking. I, he happened to be named Paul, and I, I happened to be named also like that. And you are hearing me speaking this morning. <laughs> and as you hear, faith comes into your heart. Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So, this man had Paul speaking. The hearing part is so important. The hearing part is so important. You have to hear. And this morning, as you are hearing the word of the living God, faith is coming into your heart. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. You see, sometimes we have, the, we have the impression that Jesus just ran around just healing people. And he just saw them and he healed them. No, that's not, that's not how it works. Notice, the, notice the, in, 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 in Luke chapter 4, Jesus announced the mission why he came. In verse 18, so he says, The Spirit of the Lord God, of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to do what? To preach the gospel to the poor. Jesus was a preacher. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. That is what he was preaching in Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Look at these scriptures. Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. It says, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching. Notice this, teaching, teaching. The teaching comes first. In their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Teaching, preaching, then the healing comes. So, so, so Peter, inspired by the Holy Ghost, when he was in the house of Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, Acts chapter 10, verse 36 he says this the word we god sent to the children of israel preaching peace through jesus christ he is lord of all that word you know which was proclaimed through all judea and begun from galilee after the baptism which john preached that is what i just quoted from we just read from luke chapter 14. so he says what was the word that jesus was preaching how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for god was with him he says he published that word all throughout so when he went somewhere to minister this is so important because so many people miss healing so many people miss the blessing of god because they will not hear the teaching, the hearing comes first. He says he went about. So everywhere you go, he will say, the Lord has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to bring healing. When the people believe, then they receive the healing. 
if they didn't believe the teaching and the preaching, no healing happens. Notice. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Notice Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5, verse 15. Luke chapter 5, verse 15. We are talking about hear and be healed. The Bible says, however, the report went around concerning him all the more. And great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed. Where did they come? It says to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. Why are they in the meeting? Just to be healed? No. He said they are there to hear first. The hearing comes first. The hearing comes first. They came to hear and to be healed. Hear and be healed. Hear and be healed. Hear and be healed. And they heard the message of Jesus Christ saying he was anointed. Then the healing came. The very next chapter in Luke chapter 6 verse 17. Don't mark this scripture. Don't let them leave you. Luke chapter 6 verse 17. He says, and he came down with them and stood on a level place with a crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and from the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon who came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Came to hear and to be healed. They came to hear and to be healed. That not only applies to healing, it applies to a lot of areas of our lives. If you are not willing to hear what God says concerning any area of your life, any, any challenge that you are facing, you are not ready for his deliverance. I'll say it again. If you are not willing to hear the word of God concerning any area of your life or any challenge that you are facing, you are not ready for the deliverance. Because so many times we want to pick and choose what we want to hear and do. You know, Lord, this one, I like it. I like the promises. But when you tell me to do something, I don't want to do it. Hear and be healed hear and be healed for instance when jesus was around you will find him in the temple also preaching and teaching the bible says in some places very early in the morning they came to him in the temple for to hear him sometimes when you're talking to me say no don't bring the word of god here no we can't do that we have to bring the word of god here <laughs> because that is how we live if you want to see victory in your life, if you want to, you must be open for the Lord and the word of God to work a work in your heart, to do a work in our lives and say, Lord, I am your child. I am yielded to you. Uh, if you are sick and you want to receive healing, here you are, as you are hearing right now, faith is coming into your heart. But the same thing applies in every area of your life. God has, God has, you see, the, the spiritual realm, run, there are spiritual laws just as we have natural laws. If you, you see, na, the natural law says the law of gravity is at work in, in the earth. There's another law that supersedes it. But if you climb on the roof of this building and jump down and you say you don't believe gravity works, when you fall down, you only get to the ground, you will know that gravity works. <laughs> you will get a revelation. No one will need to tell you that the law of gravity works. <laughs> so, so you see, there are spiritual laws. And those spiritual laws work as well. Hear and be healed. So the apostle Paul, knowing that, when he got to Lystra, was preaching the word of the Lord. And a casual reader of the Bible will, will, will say, Paul healed a cripple. It had nothing to do with him being an apostle. Notice he says that, verse 9 says, this man had Paul speaking. So, 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 so Paul, did three things there he preached the gospel two paul observing him intently 
and seeing that he had faith to be healed. Where did the man get the faith from? From what was preached. Whose faith was it? The, the Bible says it wasn't the apostle's faith. No, it says the man himself had faith to be healed. And you can also have faith to be healed. You can have faith to be made whole. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, I pray as you are sitting under the influence of the word of God, may you be made completely whole in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. He said to the man with a loud voice, stand up straight on your feet. And the man you see, at this point, he has faith to be healed, but he's still lying down. It's good to have the faith in your heart, but that faith must be released. It's like you have money in your pocket. You have to put it in circulation for it to do something for you. So he, he, he says, rise up on your feet. The man didn't hesitate. He leaped up. And when he acted on the faith, a miracle was the result. But the point is, he was willing to hear and we must be willing to hear say lord my life is yielded completely to you because it's, it's, it's sometimes difficult especially in the area of healing when you have a doctor's report when there is pain in your body when i realized re re recently my hand with for no reason started swelling this right hand i need this right hand for god's work pray for people to do God's work it, 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 it just kept swelling and swelling I've trained myself when pain hits my body I say pain leave I rebuild the pain and I said in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ leave my body I didn't see any change you see sometimes that's 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 also the issue I, but from my standpoint I had cast it to the root I said leave my body the pain has to leave the swelling has to go down. I ministered on a Sunday. Well, I don't know what Sunday you were. My hand was on the pulpit the whole time. I was in pain, but I was still preaching. Nothing will stop me from preaching God's word. I did an appointment with a doctor online that Sunday, and he said, I don't, there's nothing wrong here. I said, okay, the pain has to leave. By the next Wednesday, when we came to service, the thing had, my hand had gone back to normal, to the glory of God. Himself bore my pain. He bore your pain. But you must be willing to hear. And yield our lives completely to him. When we had our first child, the doctor told my wife that you can't have any more children. That's it. My wife says she listened to the word of God for six months. To get to the point where the doctor's report was no more real. The word of God was more real than the doctor's report. Hear and be healed. They came to hear and to be healed. And when her faith got received, when faith came, the conception was a result. And thank God we had two more children. <laughs> to the glory of God. Hear and be healed. Hear and be healed. That's the point. Hear and be healed. Hear and be healed. Hear and be healed. It applies to every aspect of your life. If you are defeated, you, you have chosen to stay in that spot. You have to get to the place where you rebel against anything that is not in line with the word of God. And hear and hear. You may have to go back to this message. Hear and hear and hear and hear and hear. If the enemy is harassing you in your mind, he's tormenting you in your mind. I sense in my spirit somebody, you are being harassed in your mind by the enemy. Oh my Lord and my God, if you are a child of God, the Bible says you have the mind of Christ. Your mind is not meant to be a playground for the enemy. Get to the place where you give him a kick and say, my mind is my mind. I refuse to for you to take me over my mind. 
I refuse to let you make me depressed and discouraged and down. I know, like Habakkuk said, even though there is no fig on the tree, even though there is nothing in the natural for me to see, I will still stand with God and hold on to his word and believe his word and not what the contrary circumstances tell me. Ah, some way, somehow, I believe God and when I believe God, God will change the circumstance. Ah, Lord and my God, hear and be healed. How do I, so it's so important, how do I receive and walk in this that has been made available to me? M two, make a commitment to serve the Lord. To yield your life completely to him. Just, you, you don't, we are not, these are not days and times to serve God half-heartedly. We are at the point whether you, you are all in or not in at all. Yield your life completely to the Lord. If Lord, you, you, you are my all. My life is completely yielded to you. I will serve you all the days of my life. Exodus, notice this. Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. He said, and said, if you diligently Exodus chapter 15. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He says, If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right, give ear to his commandment and keep all his studies, studies, I will put none of the disease or permit none of the disease on you which I have brought on the, on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that heals you i am the lord that heals you i will if you hearken to the voice of the lord i will not permit any of the diseases that came on egypt to come upon you you shall serve the lord and he shall bless you he shall serve the Lord and he shall bless. Make a commitment to come under God's management. Exodus chapter 23 verse 25 he says that and you shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless your bread and your water and I will take sickness away from the midst of you. If they heeded that voice and that word if God were to take sickness away from you, that means you live out your life with no sickness or disease. So if under the Old Testament, potentially they had that available to them, how much more you and I in the new covenant? But he says, just serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. I will, I will not permit. Think about it. The children of Israel went through the wilderness. For 40 years, the Bible says that their shoes did not wear out. That's the kind of God that we said. He can keep shoes for 40 years. <laughs> then this is your body that he lives in. He can keep it. I said he can keep it. I said he can keep it. He can keep it strong and healthy. He will keep you strong and healthy. But make that decision. To serve the Lord. To yield your life completely to him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 17. Notice this. Proverbs 13, 17. He says this. The King James puts it this way. He says, A wicked messenger falls into mischief, but a faithful ambassador is health. The New King James puts it this way. He says, A wicked messenger falls into trouble, but a faithful ambassador brings health. And we know that we are ambassadors of Christ. A faithful ambassador is hell. That is one thing that people long for, life and health. A faithful ambassador brings healing. Well, if I'm the pipe that the water is passing through to bring healing, then obviously I'm also going to partake of it and behold. So if you are the one bringing the health, if you are the one that is an ambassador, if you see yourself that you are on the earth for a mission for God, and you yield your life down and lay it down to, for him, he will ensure. That's what he was telling those people. Serve me, I will keep you healthy. 
It's one thing to get sick and to be healed. It's one thing not to be sick at all. I am an ambassador for God. The only reason why I am in the air is to testify for the Lord Jesus Christ. It's to please him and to do his work. A faithful ambassador is held or brings healing. You shall serve, he shall bless, he will take away. I pray in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus as you hear the word of the living God. Make a decision. Don't pick and choose from the Bible what you want and what you don't want. If God says it, Lord, I am your child. I will endeavor to live my life by your word. If I miss it, I will try to fix it and get back on track. But Lord, I am yielded to you. The fellowship of the brethren, yielding my life, testifying, doing all that. Lord, I am here as your ambassador. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, may we yield our lives to the Lord. May we yield our, you see, when we hear, in Mark chapter 6, the people in Jesus' hometown wouldn't hear. So they wouldn't receive the healing. They said, oh, we, we know him. We, he's a carpenter's son. Uh, he fixed my furniture two weeks ago. Um, <laughs> this thing sitting here, Jesus, he, he made it. <laughs> the Bible says that Jesus was astonished at their unbelief. Sometimes you can get familiar. They got familiar with him. We know him. We, I mean, and the Bible says, let's read it. Jesus, the son of God, anointed by the Holy Ghost and with power, in his own hometown. Verse 4 says, But Jesus said to him, A prophet is not without honor, except in his own country, among his own relatives, and in his own house. Verse 5, Now he could do no mighty work there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick folk, and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Then he, what is he going to do about their unbelief? He went about the villages in a circuit, teaching, teaching, teaching teaching he could do no mighty work in his own hometown was he not as anointed as in capernaum and in other places he was but in his own town he says he could do no mighty work jesus the son of god that means that in other places he talks about the crippled walking multitude being healed he said no mighty work when somebody who has not worked all their life starts working that is a mighty work we are not talking about you. I had a little headache and Jesus laid his hands on me and I got healed. So in his own hometown, why did that happen? Again, the same reason that people will not hear. So he goes about teaching. If you, if you, don't, if you don't want to hear the word of God, God, God can help you. You may, you may be in a mess right now. You may be in a difficult situation. I pray this morning, incline your ear to the word of the Lord. And be willing to hear his word. And as you hear his word. Because sometimes you say. Oh, if, if, if I was in Jesus' day. I would receive from him. Not necessarily so. The apostle Paul knew that. Jesus knew that. One time Jesus, Jesus was teaching. Thank you Lord Jesus. Jesus was teaching. And in Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. My Lord. Luke chapter 5. Verse 15. Notice this. He says. No, not no, no, Luke chapter five. Luke chapter five. Let's look at let's look at this. Look, look at this account. Verse seventeen. Now it happened on a certain day, as he was teaching. You go through the book, the, the gospels, and see how many times he was teaching, taught, and that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by, who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. The lawyers, the Pharisees, the power of God is present to heal them. How come them are not healed? He's teaching. The teaching goes here and then goes the other way. <laughs> or they are analyzing his sermon. And Is this according to the law? Is this in the law? Is this after the law, before the law, after the law? Notice one person. One person comes in and he was the only person that received. Again, a similar situation here. He was paralyzed. And, he, and, and people carried him through the roof and he got in the presence of Jesus. Notice that the whole time the power is there, it's present to heal them. You see, faith is what gives action to that power. 
believing the word of God is what gives action to that power. If you don't believe that there is healing for you, there's none for you. Power, Jesus is teaching, I'm teaching right now also, power is present, how are you going to receive? When the man got there, Jesus told him again the same thing. He's in the presence of Jesus, but he's still as paralytic as before he got there. That faith must be put into action. You must have faith for people to carry you through a roof and to bring you into the presence of Jesus. Because the thing is, you're already paralyzed. If they drop you from the roof, it's another issue. <laughs> Some other parts are going to start hurting. <laughs> so you must have faith for them to carry you on the roof and to bring you into the presence of Jesus. But when he got there, Jesus said, rise up. He didn't hesitate. He just rose up. <laughs> you may be down very low today. Rise up today in Jesus' name. Amen. I said, rise up today in Jesus' name. Amen. I said, rise up today in Jesus' name. May God make you whole completely. So this morning, even as we prepare our hearts for communion, you see, there, there are so many ways you can contact the power of God. The power of God is present in this room. The power of God is present right with you across the TV screen, you that are online. The power of God is present. Like the power is present in your car. It takes the key to bring out the power from the car. There's water flowing in your home. It's the faucet that turns and brings the water to you. There's power in this room. The switch is what turns it on. The communion is another way for us to contact the power of God. So if you are hurting, if you are, if you are sick, if, you are, if there, 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 there's something going on in your life, as we come to the communion table, I pray in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus that may God make you completely whole in Jesus' name. You see, one time, the rod, when Moses went to Egypt, the Bible says that when he laid down his rod, his rod swallowed the rod of the Egyptians. And in Isaiah chapter 11, Jesus Christ is called the rod of Jesse. Jesus Christ is the word of God. He is the bread of life. And as that word, as that bread enters you today, I pray in the name of Jesus, may it swallow everything that is not of God in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, may it swallow it up in the name of the Lord Jesus. One time, the prophet was, 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 was with, some, with, with some people. Elisha was with some people, and th there was a meal. And when they prepared the meal, they realized, in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 41, they realized that there was death in the, in the pot. He said, bring me a pot of meal. Bring me a pot of flour. When he cast it into that meal, that flour, that what he put in there, swallowed up the death, the, 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 the poison from the meal. When we partake of the communion, we are partaking of the body of Jesus Christ. And anything that cannot be found in the body of Jesus, I pray. Pray in Jesus' name as the blood bread enters your body today. May it swallow it up in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. He says, thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory be to the name of the Lord. He says, he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 16. It's not just juice and crackers. No, 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 no. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 16. <laughs> I call it the miracle meal. He says the cup of blessing which we bless. Is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break. Is it not the communion of the body of Christ? When we break the bread, we are partaking of the body of Jesus. When we partake of that juice, we are partaking of the blood of Jesus. And anything that cannot be found in Jesus, may it not be found in you. If it is an addiction, if it is sin, if it is sickness, whatever it is. In the name of Jesus, it cannot be found in Jesus. And may it not be found in you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. And then Luke chapter 24, we see Jesus, when he broke the bread, the eyes of the disciples were opened. So you see, to partake of the body, notice that he broke it and gave it to the disciples. You must be a disciple to partake of the body of Jesus. So this morning, as we come to the communion table, if you are watching online, watching on TV, wherever you may be, the question is, is Jesus your Lord? You see, your Lord means that he tells you what to do. He owns you completely. Maybe uh, you are saying, Pastor, I am heading. I'm going through a difficult time. But the question is, is your life yielded to the Lord? This morning, we want to give you an opportunity. This moment, I gave my life to the Lord Jesus. And what an adventure. What a time I've had and continue to have. He will take your life. Maybe you are like that crippled man. You feel paralyzed. You feel helpless. You feel hopeless. Maybe you are even at the point of commuting suicide. Don't take your life away. So long as God lives, there is hope for you. And your tomorrow will be all right. But are you willing to give Jesus the opportunity? Let's pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Even before we come to the communion this morning, we have been talking about hear and be healed. We have been talking about hear and be made whole. If you are willing to begin a relationship with the Lord Jesus, or maybe you are a Christian, you believe in the Lord Jesus, but you are not living for him. You are not serving him. Your life is not yielded to him. Maybe you knew him and for some reason you've walked away. Maybe when you came to the Lord at first, you were fervent, very hot. Every time the church doors opened, you were there. Every time anything was going, you were totally all in, testifying. And some way, some other, the Bible says that in the last days, the love of many will wax cold. Maybe your love is, 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 is cold. Oh, this morning he wants to set you on fire one more time. He wants to set you ablaze one more time. To return you to your first love. The presence of God is here. If you are willing to begin a relationship with Jesus, just repeat after me. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Just say, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I believe you were raised from the dead. And today, I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. Make me whole and help me live the rest of my life for you. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, for accepting me into the family of God. And if you knew him and you are not living for him, just make a decision today to rededicate your life to the Lord and say, Lord Jesus, help me live the rest of my life for you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Give him the praise and the glory in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Give him the praise and the glory in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Give him the praise. 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 His presence is here. Give him the praise. 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 In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. If you are sick in any part of your body, place your hand where it hurts. The same power. That forgives is the same power that heals. He said to that paralytic in, 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 in Luke chapter 5, he said, your sins are forgiven. That is the first thing he said. Then he says, which is easier to say, your sins be forgiven or to say, rise up and walk. The same power that forgives is the same power that heals. And that power is present right now and I sense in my heart, he's touching and healing and right across the screen, he's there with you. Just say in the name of the Lord Jesus. Repeat it after me, please, in the name of the Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that you bore my sin on the tree. And at the same time, by your stripes, I am healed. I thank you, Lord, for healing me, for paying the price for my healing. And in the name of Jesus. I receive your healing in my body now from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet thank you Lord you bore my pain pain leave my body now I receive my healing 
from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet in the name of Jesus sickness leave me now disease leave me now devil take your hands off my body I rebuke you spirit of infirmity take your hands off my body and in the name of Jesus thank you Lord for your healing power thank you Lord for making me whole lift up your hand and give him the praise and the glory wherever you may be in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus you are made whole from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet God is doing a work in your life right now in the name of the Lord Jesus I see him touching you you will never be the same you will have a testimony in the name of the Lord Jesus oh we give you the praise we give you the glory thank you father thank you for your visitation take all the glory take all the honor in Jesus name everybody say amen say amen. amen oh lord thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord his presence is here don't let the devil steal from you one time a woman they had given her a, a death sentence they said she was going to die by midnight so and she heard the word of the lord she said thank you lord i'm healed the doctor said you are going to die she said no thank you lord i'm healed she kept saying out thank you lord for healing me and midnight came and she was still alive and a couple of days came and she was still alive and she lived to testify to, to, to the glory of god the devil has told you he's going to kill you but i've come to announce to you you will not die before your time I said you will not die before your time you will not die before your time if you are watching online watching on TV wherever you may be the question is is Jesus your Lord you see your Lord means that he tells you what to do he owns you completely maybe uh, you're saying pastor I am heading I'm going through a difficult time the question is is your life yielded to the Lord this morning we want to give you an opportunity this moment I gave my life to the Lord Jesus and what an adventure what a time I've had and continue to have he will take your life maybe you are like that crippled man you feel paralyzed you feel helpless you feel hopeless maybe you are even at the point of commuting suicide don't take your life away so long as God lives there is hope for you and your tomorrow will be all right but are you willing to give Jesus the opportunity let's pray thank you Lord Jesus thank you Lord even before we come to the communion this morning we have been talking about here and be healed we have been talking about here and be made whole if you are willing to begin a relationship with the Lord Jesus or maybe you are a Christian you believe in the Lord Jesus but you are not living for him you are not serving him your life is not yielded to him maybe you knew him and for some reason you've walked away Maybe when you came to the Lord at first, you were fervent, very hot. Every time the church doors opened, you were there. Every time anything was going, you were totally all in, testifying. And some way, some way, the Bible says that in the last days, the love of many will wax cold. Maybe your love is, 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 is cold. Oh, this morning he wants to set you on fire one more time. He wants to set you ablaze one more time. To return you to your first love. The presence of God is here. If you are willing to begin a relationship with Jesus, just repeat after me. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Just say, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I believe you were raised from the dead. And today, I confess you as my Lord and as my Savior. Make me whole and help me live the rest of my life for you. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, for accepting me into the family of God. And if you knew him and you are not living for him, just make a decision today to rededicate your life to the Lord and say, Lord Jesus, help me live the rest of my life for you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. 